speaker by yeah i like just to, to welcome you and to I'm very happy to restart after I don't know many years pandemic and so on and so forth the visiting program of us and you, you know there is this program which is aimed to invite distinguished scientists uh, all over the world that wish to visit us everyone want is there of course and uh, so we we start the first one is the is Laurent and uh, for free this year we also got Martin that happens to be around and they will give another seminar is not in the program but uh, uh, it's oh, okay it's still it's still fine <laughs> and we will have uh, uh, more uh, probably we have more visitors already two are scheduled for the autumn and the call is already open so I really much hope that uh, uh, we start again with a lot of uh, exciting talks but so thanks Laurent, to accept and uh, before, please. Uh, yeah, uh, just a quick introduction to uh, for Laurent Fret. Uh, well, Laurent Fret, uh, a quick bio, uh, started uh, with her PhD in Paris and then went to Cambridge and then to Bologna at uh, the Radio Astronomy Institute uh, um, a few years ago. <laughs> then she, she got a permanent position at the, the laboratory at the Cic de Marseille. Uh, and then she, she moved in, in Lyon, where she uh, she was appointed at the director position for five years. And uh, very recently, she took me back to Monday. Uh, and uh, uh, from the scientific point of view, she uh, she's an expert of the galaxy evolution, uh, and uh, especially of distribution functions like luminosity functions and the transformation rate density. And uh, many of us know, uh, know uh, her since uh, the times of uh, Bimos, the Bimos instrument. She, she was a builder of uh, that instrument uh, that we all love. <laughs> and she was also responsible for the deep data of the BBDS uh, uh, survey. Uh, since then, she has been involved in many other surveys uh, like uh, with, uh, uh, with the Cosmos, Cosmos, and other surveys uh, with the Muse uh, and GWC and Euclid. And uh, now she's also involved uh, uh, in many instrumental projects. Uh, and uh, this uh, is one of the reasons uh, why we invited her, uh, because uh, she has been uh, in the science advisory group of the Mauna Kea Spectroscopic Explorer, and she's now in the management group, but she's also in the steering committee of WSD. Uh, so there is, uh, as uh, Laurence will explain uh, later, this uh, request uh, from uh, many communities to, to have uh, uh, a spe um, spectroscopic uh, dedicated telescopes uh, uh, with uh, um, 10 meter class uh, telescopes. And uh, she will uh, tell us something <laughs> about this. Just to say something personal, I always uh, uh, like it very much Laurence because uh, she, she's a free thinker and she always uh, carry uh, <laughs> Uh, her ideas uh, in a strong way, and uh, she's uh, consistent uh, during uh, her career. And so uh, it's uh, it's nice to, to have her here and uh, to, to see that uh, people like her uh, are a success. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, thank you, Nicole. I would like to thank you a lot uh, to invite me here. So it's uh, after COVID thing. So. It's great to see you all of them. So thank you, Mikol, thank you, Olga, and thank you, your surgery, and uh, enough uh, people uh, to, um, it's with a lot of emotion that I'm here, because indeed, uh, I was here 25 years ago, uh, uh, especially here at the next door Instituto di Radio Astronomia, and doing a postdoc with the people of uh, INAF and Paolo Vettolani. And uh, uh, I was appointed to work on the largest, uh, most multi object spectroscopic uh, facility for the VLT at that time. And uh, so <laughs> since then, uh, this kind of facilities has been, has been always uh, uh, something close to my heart. So, um, I will uh, start to, I will speak about the Mauna Kea uh, Spectroscopic Explorer. And uh, uh, is this way, sorry. Ah, uh, yes, it's um, okay, I have to do this. Sorry, okay, so 
The outline of my talk is the following. So I will do a, a short uh, introduction uh, to the needs of a wide field high multiplex spectroscopic facility. So it's short because it could, uh, you know, it, uh, it could uh, be uh, just only one one hour talk about that. Then uh, I will present the MSC uh, projects, uh, the science cases that have been developed for MSC. Uh, we'll give some uh, last updates about the Mona Kea uh, situations for those who know who don't know. And the uh, last updates about the design about the MSC. Uh, there it's, it's moving quite very fast. And I will uh, conclude with the sufficiency call for partnership. And uh, you all, all, you've all seen the letter of intent uh, that was uh, due to the 1st of May. So, um, okay. So as you know, uh, for the next decade, there will be uh, large, many, many ground-based and space-based uh, facilities that will enable very large uh, data sets, uh, photometric and astrometric uh, data sets, and that uh, will uh, probe uh, from uh, our own galaxy to the uh, deep universe. And uh, there is no uh, 10 meter uh, multi-object uh, spectroscopy facility, which is uh, yet uh, definitely for, uh, accepted uh, on uh, over world uh, to be able to complement and follow up this uh, deep series. So um, you know all of them, I'm sure. So in many wavelengths and uh, ground-based and space-based. So uh, the thing is that uh, in terms of imaging and photometry, uh, let's say that the future will be very bright in terms of multi-band uh, surveys. So there will be the, the space um, uh, facilities with Euclid that you all know and uh, Nancy Grace Roman uh, space telescopes. And they are uh, both uh, speedless uh, uh, spectroscopy uh, facility. Uh, so the, the main aim is uh, quite uh, doing some uh, for deep photometry and uh, wide field photometry. And then uh, there the will be the ground-based uh, facilities that you all know about the LSST, on the, which is a program uh, made on the Vera Rubin Observatory. Uh, so it's a photometry from the south, uh, from you to, to near infrared. And uh, on the north, they will, uh, there is the ongoing uh, unions which use uh, both the CFHT uh, stars and Subaru. So, um, also uh, in terms of uh, the asteroseismic uh, data, which is not my uh, my, uh, uh, my uh, where I am an expert, but the, also the future is very bright. So there is the Gaia ongoing, uh, doing some astrometry, photometry, and uh, radial uh, velocity um, spectrometry. Uh, but only two uh, bright stars up to uh, 17. And there will be also the plateau, which is a uh, photometry uh, monitoring in the visible band for very large samples of bright stars. Okay, but then there will be some uh, follow up uh, from ground based uh, observation for, to, to measure the radial uh, velocity and to, the, to, to, to measure the masses. Uh, so, on the, with all this uh, amazing, exquisite data that we arrive, uh, there will be uh, no, there is no, uh, for now, uh, wide field spectroscopic facilities. And we know it, and it's uh, since uh, more than a, a decade that we, uh, our community uh, is uh, asking for, for such a facility. So just to give you some example, for instance, um, is not with uh, photometric redshift will be able to do some science in particular to understand all the bionic uh, physics uh, ongoing. So um, we need uh, massive uh, large scale deep spectroscopic surveys. And for instance, to uh, trace the cosmic web at high redshift, 
to look for the connectivity of the cosmic web to clusters and photo clusters. So ZFOT uh, is, is not enough precise. Uh, to look for the closed environment around galaxies to constrain the galaxy flow properties. And also uh, to uh, seek for rare and extreme populations. So uh, we need a um, precise redshift uh, with respect to ZFAT uh, to train sets across uh, sky area and galaxy populations, uh, and to increase also the precision on fundamental physical parameters. So uh, also the back to harm than the, 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 the world range of the spectrum uh, for, for the sources, then we enable them to um, really prop the physical information, which is inside those uh, uh, spect spectra. So we can derive the star formation rate from the uh, emission lines, the internal stellar velocity dispersion, the metallicity, the dust, et cetera, et cetera because as you know, uh, whatever this D and you kid, you will have uh, four lines, uh, two three sigma, and uh, it's not a uh, way to really derive all the physical information. And uh, also it will enable to, to, to feed, uh, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, to find targets to feed the uh, extremely large telescopes mm -hmm. that will have a very small field of view. So this will require this all this science, which is just a short overview, moderate resolution uh, multi object spectroscopic wide field facility. And uh, there is the other part also um, for, the, for the stellar uh, surveys, as I've shown to you, that there will be, uh, there are already many, many data. Uh, so uh, this kind of uh, facility will be, uh, will enable to follow up. Um, so all the, the, the stellar surveys. Uh, so to go quite, uh, to do spectroscopy to quite far uh, away from, uh, from our galaxy and uh, to derive also to, uh, chemical abundances uh, because the, uh, it will not be on a narrow range uh, of the, the spectra, but uh, uh, it will be uh, mainly in the, in the visible, so to get uh, uh, chemical abundances. Uh, so for this kind of uh, work follow up, then this needs high resolution uh, multi-object spectroscopic wide field uh, facilities. Um, so also I would just also to keep in mind that you need um, the compromise for those who know who are not too young uh, be, between the previous space uh, that was uh, in Afrosin and uh, also in Marseille and so forth. Uh, which was a, sp uh, sp uh, a space uh, spectrograph uh, proposition and uh, uh, the Dune one, which was an image uh, in space. So Euclid is both, so it's neither good in both ways. Uh, so uh, it's why we need follow up, you know, on the ground based, uh, ground based uh, follow up. Also, uh, let's also understand very well that the wide field imaging galaxy surveys are optimized for cosmological studies uh, and not for the physics of galaxy assembly on a statistical basis. Um, also, uh, for the stellar surveys, they are still restricted to the Milky Way. Uh, what about uh, uh, the, the, the nearby uh, galaxies? Or to the bright regime for the, for the velocities? So also uh, why we need it, uh, this kind of facilities on 10 meter class telescope is that the VLT and ELT, the, the ESO community, uh, they are not uh, facilities dedicated to massive surveys. Uh, also they are too small field of view or too low multiplex uh, capabilities. Uh, and so, and, and they are not dedicated. So if we want to have massive uh, surveys, uh, they are not adapted for this kind of, uh, of science. Um, okay. Sorry. Uh, okay. So uh, the claims for getting a wide field uh, MOS uh, facilities has been reported in many, many uh, ways in different countries. So really there is a, the, the community is really uh, 
uh, very attentive to, I mean, he's really pushing for this kind of uh, facilities. Uh, then also there are difficulties uh, above the, the, the budget of uh, and many other things. There is also that the current landscape is quite very busy with uh, ongoing and future uh, moss on the smaller telescope. Uh, um, Daisy for moss, there will be PFS uh, that will start the summer, uh, no, next year in the summer. The moons, the weave, the mosaic and so forth. So uh, the, 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 the moss community is quite very busy. Uh, so it's difficult, whatever the country, France or Italy or even in England, or I mean, at least uh, in the ESO community, uh, to, to, to get free time uh, to, to work and think about the next generations. So nevertheless, uh, it is now that we need to push for white field most first facilities that will happen uh, beyond uh, 2035. Uh, it's now and not, not in 10 years, so it's always difficult. Also, let's also keep in mind that anyway, uh, we always build science spaces now. It's not e always easy to project ourselves of, of what will be the, the, the uh, science to, to, to be done in 10 years. They will be the result of your kid and so forth. Uh, nevertheless, we have always seen that this kind of facilities uh, surpass always the original rationals, uh, as proven by uh, earlier by other uh, facilities. So uh, the situation for now is that over the world there are two. Uh, I mean, let's say the Western world or uh, and even uh, above. There are two. Uh, projects uh, to, and two complementary projects uh, to propose so, uh, a search white field uh, most uh, facility on 10 meter class telescope. So you know, because enough is part of it, uh, the, the WST, the white field spectroscopic telescope, which is the idea uh, a MOS and, a, and a IFS in integral field uh, uh, spectrograph. Uh, that will observe simultaneously at the same time, let's say, <laughs> in the visible uh, And it is foreseen uh, to be in uh, South Chile. And it's the suite of the Spectel ISO report in 2016 by Richard Ellis. Um, the, the, the aim is to resubmit um, uh, a proposal uh, within the Horizon uh, call, infra infrastructure call. Uh, next year, and to work for three years to have a concept design uh, and then to propose it to ESO. Okay, so you see about the, the times. Um, uh, so I will not speak about that, and it will be next uh, very soon uh, in Vienna, uh, the, the, the first uh, scientific uh, meeting. And so this is the north, the south. And then, so as you say, as you see also, it's only uh, nothing is uh, decided, of course, uh, not even ISO, uh, whatever they support or not. And then there is also the, in the, this idea of uh, to transform the, the CFHT, so uh, into a 10 meter uh, class telescope. And here is a bit different. So there is a, uh, a, the Vs and the near uh, to be observed simultaneously. So they are completely uh, because here, uh, with the IFS in the infra near infrared, is not yet done. You know, the muse, blue muse, but it's not, there is not a muse like uh, in infrared. So, uh, if there is uh, infrared, uh, it will be really much uh, uh, in terms of uh, research and development uh, uh, things for now. Uh, so, I will concentrate on this uh, part, which is in the north. Um, so uh, the aim is to transform then the CFHT, uh, so on the left to the right, the MSC. So um, just I will give you like this. So the CFHT Observatory, so Canada France Hawaii Telescope, is a 3.6 meter telescope. Uh, and uh, what is great, it is really an, an excellent natural sight uh, seeing. 
Uh, it has a long history of successful uh, operations. It is also uh, <clears throat> at the location uh, which is equatorial, so that means it can observe a free fall of the entire sky. And uh, it's a world class uh, uh, optical infrared prime focus gas Planck radiation uh, telescope. Actually, uh, currently it operates five instruments, uh, and uh, I will come back on that later on. And then, previously, for those who know, there was a, the, the first 3D spectrograph at that time, Oasis, and the first MOS CISA, with which we have been able uh, in uh, 95, uh, Olivier Lefebvre, to uh, build uh, the first uh, IZ at that time, Z equal 1.3, uh, survey. Uh, just all memories. I was doing my PhD at that time. So, um, so the thing is to transform this into um, this uh, 11 uh, meter uh, class uh, telescope. So the idea is to um, keep uh, the same ground feet, okay, here. So uh, this is the same, as you say. Uh, so we don't take uh, more place on the Monakea uh, mont, uh, mountain. Um, so uh, so it's real using just uh, the, the the ground base, but then there is a new carrot uh, that will be uh, uh, built and uh, to be able to host uh, um, an eleven point five uh, uh, mirror. Uh, a segmented primary mirror, and also is to put a white field character and then an IDC uh, to create the 1.5 uh, square uh, degree field of view at the front focus. So, uh, so here in a nutshell, what uh, was, so that was the MSC baseline design. You will see that it's just moving very fast in this moment. So, uh, so the larger picture, which is required, the wide field of view, the fact that we need thousands of spectra collected uh, at the same time, above 4,000. We want uh, spectroscopy from the UV to the near infrared. Uh, we want uh, a facility going from the low moderate uh, uh, resolution to high resolution for the stellar studies. 4,000 and something which is able to have uh, dedicated and specialized operations. Um, here are the current particip participants and observers of the MSC uh, consortium. So they are the historical uh, partners. Uh, so the University of Hawaii, UH, the Canada, France. Then there is the Australian, uh, uh, the AO. There is the Chinese Academy of Science. There is the Indian uh, part also, the South Korea, and there is the Texas University as a participant right now. And as observers, there is the Noir Lab in uh, the States. And in the UK, there is the uh, ATC. Um, and uh, the contribution about this, so you see that uh, France and Canada are still, so they are in kinds of uh, many uh, distributions. Uh, and uh, here is about uh, the, the money that has been put to, uh, to, to think about the CMSC uh, uh, project since uh, 2015. As I say, it's quite a while. So the MEC uh, initial science requirements were low, moderate, high resolutions, okay? So the low resolution, we wanted it, okay, up to 1.3 at least. The moderate resolution, so we wanted to go to the um, H band, so to 1.8 micron, which means that you need to, uh, because you have the, the, the skylines here, so we need absolutely moderate resolution. And for the stellar studies, uh, high resolution. So 4,000 uh, in the visible and in the red, uh, near, near, near infrared, you know, less than one micron uh, to 20,000. So that was the initial uh, requirement. And um, here uh, was the initial concept, uh, conceptual system design 
So with, uh, as I said, the, the white field uh, corrector and the ADC at the top, well, it's here, to, to get the 1.5 square degree, so in blue. Um, then uh, there was the, so the enclosure, the new enclosure, then the fiber transmission system uh, with 4,000 fibers at that time, at least. The low moderate resolution spectrograph on the NASMIS uh, platform. Uh, so I, I have the arrow. So here, here, and here, and here. And uh, the, the high spectro, the high resolution spectrograph here at the, in the coup de room. So that was the, 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 the first concept. So also with this uh, initial requirement, there were uh, eight uh, science working group uh, from uh, exoplanet and stellar astrophysics, Milky Way reserve stellar population, Asian supermassive black hole, cosmology, chemical nucleosis, galaxy formation and evolution as physical uh, test and, uh, of dark matter and uh, transient uh, time domain astronomy. Uh, so there, there's been uh, many scientific uh, cases that have been uh, developed. Uh, so I think it's, it's, uh, it's, it's a bit, I will go through a bit some of them, uh, but you can have everything. So it was in 19, uh, either in the digital science case, which is, which is on the archive or the MSC book, which is also on the archive. And it was the contribution of more than 100 uh, uh, contributors over the world. Um, so for instance, for the science cosmology, we know that with this kind of facility, we'll be able to uh, probe uh, this region between which is two and three, which is the peak of the CMB balancing uh, effective, effectiveness, okay? And over a large area of 10,000 uh, uh, square degree. Uh, so that's, that's uh, where MSC is standing uh, uh, according to all the other uh, surveys. Uh, also in cosmology, uh, there will be a, the, 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 this thing about the constraining the neutrino mass the same combining MSC facilities with uh, uh, Planck and Dizzy means that we'll be able to uh, put some strong constraint on it. And ex also what will be the very important things afterward is uh, to, to look for the primordial non uh to, to constrain the, 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 to probe the physics of inflation of the early universe. It's very fancy in this moment. So the same in combining with uh, Daisy and, and Planck, uh, it will reach also um, a very excellent constraint. So this is the cosmology part. Then there is a galaxy formation and evolution. So there is like the classical uh, wedding cake. So you do a wide uh, field. So, um, uh, writer sources and the deep field, very deep fields. And again, uh, at that time, so I received a survey, so the classical things to, to, to look for the 1.5 free uh, region, the cosmic noon, as it is said. And here the, 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 the what is, uh, I mean, the preview, so what is, uh, will be done before the MOS. And the MSC also uh, in terms of number of galaxies. So, 10 to the five galaxies, the magical numbers uh, that we need at least to do a statistical uh, analysis of enough uh, galaxies per uh, retreat beans, per luminosity, per stellar mass, per uh, whatever. You know, uh, Olivier Lefebvre was putting his nice equation. 10 to the five was his uh, magical number. And uh, as the function of the medium redshift, and uh, the um, uh, so here is, uh, is the same, but uh, the fact that is good, because it's a 10 meter, 11 meter, then we go quite deep in magnitude uh, as a function of the area. And again, compare with other uh, uh, moons, uh, uh, the things that will be done with weave and, uh, and others. Uh, again, MSO was quite, uh, is quite competitive. Ever, already with this, uh, the concept, first the preliminary concept. Um, for the stars and exoplanets, uh, which is less my uh, topic, but uh, uh, what is great is that uh, then it's to get to the G band up to 20 for MSE. 
Uh, and so uh, MSC with the high resolution mode uh, will, able to, will be able to, 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 to get spectroscopy of uh, tens of millions of stars with uh, high precision future space based photometry. So then after you get the target photometry ready the and then you bring your targets uh, for the spectroscopy. Um, it also, you have the classical uh, color magnitude uh, diagram, and uh, here is shown that MAC uh, will enable also to go to uh, uh, up to 130 kiloparsecs uh, for getting a spectroscopy, and so to look for the Milky Way and local group. Uh, so uh, again, it's very uh, challenging, uh, up to the G magnitude 20. Um, here is stars and the planets also. So with the high resolution, uh, we will uh, be able to look for the, to go for the, the velocity of precision of 100 uh, meter per uh, second. Uh, and this will enable to uh, detect stellar and substellar companions of uh, 100, uh, uh, of stars in each MSC pointing. So also it's quite powerful uh, for the follow-up of the ongoing uh, photometric uh, surveys uh, for stars. Also one thing also to say is um, that uh, we need, because uh, the spectroscopy with fibers and so forth, we need uh, to have the, the targets. That's the difference with uh, like news where you, you don't need to have a, to know where are exactly the, the targets to plug your fiber. So it's why uh, it's very important to have photometry, deep photometry, and here there will be uh, the LSST, which will be uh, uh, fantastic. And MSC will enable um, to have access to 74% um, uh, of the primary uh, LSST footprint, which is very uh, reassuring. Um, that's it um, on that. So I've presented uh, what has been done on this first concept, and there's been a lot of reviews, meanwhile. So uh, in 2020, so as you know, there has been this COVID virus that has delayed a bit everything. But then uh, anyway, in the USA, so there is the Astro, Astrophysical Decadal uh, Survey. Um, uh, they were uh, very um, uh, keen to support uh, MSC-like uh, 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 facilities, uh, and they had uh, some, uh, some, uh, I would say, uh, uh, advice uh, to follow up on that. Uh, and in the USA, there is also the snow, snow mass, so it's the particle physics uh, process for them. And again, also, uh, they are very interested in MSC uh, to impart, uh, they are interested in increasing the number of fibers as it was, pre as it was presented before uh, the, the 4,000, 5,000 fibers, but to increase it by a factor of three, four. Uh, they are interested for, for dark matter uh, constraint. And uh, as they said here, um, so they are pushing also for highly multiplex spectrograph, larger picture, wide field view, okay, classical. And so they said it can include MSC, Megamapper, which is a bit uh, very focused on the, the, the cosmology, and the, the ISO spectral concepts, which is now uh, WST, uh, for obtaining data that could constrain models of dark matter because they're interested by that. So, uh, in the France, uh, in France, uh, they, we had our perspective. Uh, so also, uh, France wants always to be part of the CFHT. Uh, so to maintain access to this uh, great uh, uh, site. Um, Canadian also. Uh, so the, the stakeholder partner wants to be still in and, and to continue. Uh, to because we not keep forever four meter old uh, telescopes and uh, we need to go forward and MSC is a great uh, way to to go for the for, 
for, for, for a new facility uh, on this uh, very good uh, site. The Australian, um, they were decade old was in 2016. So also they are pushing since a long, long time uh, for uh, a moss, uh, white field moss uh, facilities. Uh, it's very known, they, they've done the, the 2DF, it was uh, at the time. Uh, um, so uh, they are pushing and they are both on the MSC and the WST because they are pushing for this kind of, uh, of uh, facilities and so for them then both um, they want something and they will be where 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 things will will go um, or maybe in both uh, so okay so that was the the the, the return from all this uh, this uh, uh, perspectives in different countries and we see that the community in general uh, push for this uh, white field uh, most uh, uh, spectroscopy. So um, the first uh, low medium resolution uh, baseline uh, was uh, this one. And so there was this one. And it was at that time, uh, so it's from this concept that all the science spaces and all the things have been uh, derived after from the book in uh, MSC book in 2018, the science cases in 2019. But you will see that things are moving quite fast and we will need to, to update all of that. So at the start was the, the Vs, uh, there was uh, one, one, uh, one box with uh, four, uh, uh, four camera. And so uh, in the Vs, uh, three camera, one in blue, green, and red, and only one in the near infrared. So either we could observe in the Y and J in the low resolution mode, up to 1.3 uh, micron, or in the edge band, but in the medium resolution. So it was either. Uh, but this uh, concept had several issues that we needed to, to, to look for. So we did that. Uh, uh, with the Australian people and the people uh, at Cran in Lyon, where I was in Lyon. So they asked for a Delta uh, for design review that has been uh, ongoing uh, in 2021. And so we decided to separate the Vs, put four uh, camera uh, from, the, uh, from, from the blue to the one micron. So, and to go for moderate, we don't go for the low. Moderate is okay, you know, uh, moderate resolution. So uh, three, 5,000. And uh, then uh, another part which observes simultaneously the, uh, the, the J, uh, G, uh, J band uh, up to the H band, okay? So it is not anymore all. So that was fantastic for us. Uh, so uh, that has been done so between uh, the Kral and, and uh, Lam, so always the same people, you see, uh, the Brest, the PI is also a Kral, and, uh, and we work with the wind light, uh, uh, light which is a, an optic, uh, we say, well, an optic uh, entreprise uh, in Marseille. Anyway, so um, I will see later on also that. Uh, okay. Nowadays, there is some updates uh, from the uh, LMR. So uh, it's very, very, it's still going on. So there is a, this, they are in house, I mean, at the CFHT. The, the, the design is still uh, going on. And nowadays it, it, it used the wavelength uh, splitting technology and the pupil uh, slicing. So you see, we go from uh, resolution that are moderate. Um, also, uh, there are a concept with uh, CMOS camera, which is uh, less expensive. And um, so it's going on. And so, uh, also for the high resolution uh, spectrograph that was the design in, the, in 2019 for the CODR. 
And uh, also they use the same uh, wavelength splitting technology and triplet slicing. And uh, still for the so the 4,000 uh, up to 20,000 from the blue to the red. Um, okay, so that, that was what was done before, but then, uh, okay, I will uh, uh, go. We have to understand that uh, the, the, the skiing in uh, Hawaii, for people who have never been there, um, the link between the Hawaiian culture and the astronomical research on Mauna Kea. So Mauna Kea means white mountain in uh, Polynesian or Hawaiian. And uh, it is a sacred mountain for the native people there. Um, and it's very important for them. And uh, here is the view we see from when you're on the below the mountain. So the telescope are barely uh, visible, let's say like this. So in uh, 68, the University of Hawaii was granted 65 year uh, lease and not more than 30 astronomical observatories could be built. Okay. So if one is built, normally another one needs to be removed. So since the 90s was okay, but there was some starting some issues about environmental uh, issues and so forth from the native people and so forth. Nevertheless, uh, then happened the TMT, the 30 meter uh, telescope that uh, has been uh, as, as, uh, ended to very strong protest in 19 and they closed the road to go to the summit so an observation could not be done. And so um, things started to be uh, uh, difficult. So to um, address this issue with the local community, there have been many things uh, since the 20s. And it ended up uh, last year to the law uh, act to, to 255 that I will say uh, just the overview is that for now is the University of Hawaii with the sides things with the management of the observatory. So now they afterward, um, they will remove this uh, uh, UH uh, management role. Then uh, it declares astronomy a policy of the states. Okay, that's meaning it will include all activities and astronomy will be one, one of them, you know. Uh, it will establish uh, a group of 11 member group uh, of 11 members that will include a uh, representation of the native Hawaiian community in all aspects of Mauna Kea management. This transition from the UH University of Hawaii to this group uh, will be for five year period from this year 2000 to 2028 or sooner. This is this group that will grant new lease, new site lease, okay? And they will uh, prioritize the preservation of untouched land of a new development, citing a preference for reusing astronomical sites that, that already exist. So let's say that MSC is fitting in this because uh, it's keeping the same uh, uh, ground based, uh, so there is no, it does not touch the landscape. So according to this master lease issue in 68, all existing fa facilities will need to be decommissioned by 2033 if uh, there's no lease, if the lease are not renewed. So there is some uncertainties and uh, uh, the MSC and all the observatories there needs to work very closely with now the, 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 the community. So they are working very hard on this and which is excellent. Uh, well, uh, I will not go on this, but uh, let's say, well, it's just to say that um, the, the, this new law is in agreement with, uh, for instance, the, the decadal uh, surveys uh, of the American uh, side. Uh, side. Uh, and one thing important is now that the MSC are as a shared values. So one which is very important is the uh, statement on the cultural heritage of Mauna Kea, so the, about the land, the, the land uh, acknowledgement, so to acknowledge that uh, it is a site which is uh, of 
great importance for the Hawaiian community. Uh, that is, is a site of a place of wor worship uh, for, for them. Uh, there are hundreds of historic, uh, historic properties. Uh, so uh, I think it's very important nowadays to, to recognize this. And, uh, and, and that's to say that as uh, astronomers, we are really privileged and honored to have the opportunity to observe the sky uh, from uh, uh, this place. And I've been several times there uh, I'm doing my PhD and so forth, and it's really uh, one of the best places in the world. You're above the sky, above the clouds, and uh, also uh, there is a. Now we see it nowadays in uh, all the big consortia, but it was not like this uh, when I was younger. Uh, the statement of equity, diversity, and inclusion. So. Um, Following all of this, so I wanted to, to explain to you why um, the impact of this law, which start five minutes. Wow. Okay, I have to go fast. Then the impact of that is, is that we will have a two uh, component development plan nowadays. So there will be this transition period starting from now. Um, to proceed focusfully uh, and in consultation with the local community. There will be the construction partnership uh, that cannot uh, start before uh, there is a, we know about uh, if there is a, 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 a the renew uh, of the lead. Uh, so MSC cannot start uh, before 2030, let's say like this. And so the two uh, phase component means that uh, it's a solution to capitalize on um, existing MSC work and to enlarge the partnership. So there is the Pathfinder, which aim for uh, first light late 2020. So you see the date on the formator. And it's something low risk for the c and to continue at the same time for the MSC. Um, so the first light, not before the mid late uh, 2030s, like the WST and so forth, we're in the same, uh, we say. So, uh, because I need to go fast, so here is the new things that's going on. So the, uh, there is really a fully completely different uh, design, which is the MEC quad mirror. What is the, uh, so done by Sam Barden, who was working on the foremost. And so what is very important is now there is an increased multiplex. We go to 20,000 fibers. There is the increase of the aperture size up to 12 uh, meter. Uh, there is also the increase in the wave left range, and there is maybe, so edge band no problem, but there is a potential K band uh, upscop, uh, increase in the blue throughput. Uh, what about the CMOS? Uh, increase the, maybe the field of view of 1.5 to 2. And what is also very important, because I was uh, getting a problem to, to make happy the whole community, is that. Uh, now uh, there is a possibility, uh, possible additional instrumentations. That mean uh, 20 years after a new instrument could be uh, put on the NAS missile cask. Um, so here is the, the design. So I will not go through it, but then uh, let's see that accommodate multiple instruments uh, up to 20,000 fibers. Uh, we go to 12 meter, so things are, are, are getting very fast. Uh, and I'm very, very happy about that because uh, I thought that 4,000 was not enough before. Here, just to show you, uh, that was before this. So just to compare with the moon, PFS on Subaru and MSC. So that, this is the survey speed, okay? Uh, so MSC uh, was uh, three times more than PFS and six times more than this. But nowadays, with multiplying by four to five the number of fibers, then uh, this will be multiplied by uh, by uh, by that. And you see that now the MSC one one more designed uh, for the speed uh, here. It's compared with the throne uh, is uh, seven. Uh, 741 compared to the previous one. Okay, and this is the, the WST, but this case is uh, will will change also. But we are going on the same kind of uh, of things uh, uh, and capabilities. Uh, 
I want just to, I need to go fast. So there's the MSC Pathfinder. So it'll, uh, it will enable, it will be able, so the, actually there, is, there are two, two there is the Espadon and Spiro. Uh, there are spectrocolor meters right now. So the thing is, is the vision uh, projects to, to, to put them together and also to enable to put an IFU with this at the cast ground focus and uh, so on the format uh, class telescope. And then uh, to put um, uh, a MOS with uh, 1000 fi fibers uh, <coughs> in the, in, at the NASMIS uh, or the PUDE uh, room. So uh, this is for the Pathfinder. So the Pathfinder means start low risk. So based on existing technologies and the components like uh, using a DAISY uh, spectrograph. Uh, maybe two to first light, let's see. Uh, I feel first month after. Uh, the final configuration, configuration uh, will be based on the community response and it will maintain the MSC momentum by engaging the community and the American and the international uh, in the MSC Pathfinder Consortium and to lay the, the groundwork for the MSC construction uh, partnership. Um, um, so the problem with the MSC uh, Pathfinder is where could be the best niche and to go fast. We see that here for the Pathfinder that with all the things going on uh, from the two and eight meter class telescope, the MOS, is that there is a lack of high spectral resolution above 700 nanometer and there is a lack of near infrared coverage. Uh, so uh, here are the possible science, so time domain, astrophysics, galactic archaeology, spectroscopic uh, of stars and so forth and so forth. I uh, will go and the thing is to reduce the risk. And here I finish, I conclude. Uh, yes. Uh, so there is a CFHT call for collaborators. So you've seen uh, the letter of intents uh, for the 1st of May. Uh, so right now the CPHT has five uh, instruments, Megacam, WIRCAM, so you know the union uh, photometric things, uh, Espadon, CITER, and SPIRO. And uh, you can see that it's a, it's a telescope which is doing very well in terms of impact. Um, and uh, well, that's it, it's just... And there is, uh, so, this, so this is the first thing, is there's a call for the MSC Pathfinder, okay, uh, on the formatter. And the other one is also a call for uh, getting in to work also on the MSC uh, Pathfinder. And the other one is the, the, the MSC with the new uh, design. Uh, that's it. Uh, ah, the last news is that we uh, have now a new project scientist, Peter French from uh, Texas University, expert uh, in dynamical and chemical evolution in the Milky Way. And he used to work, uh, to be very deeply involved in Sloan surveys, so he's expert on that. So we need to also think about new uh, science cases for the Pathfinder and for the MSC with all the, 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 the moving on in the, in the new concepts. So uh, I would like to thank you. And uh, if anybody is interested, I'm here this week. And uh, so the CFHT is seeking for science members, as you've seen. So I'm here also to, to push. So um, as I said, I am both in WSC and MSC because uh, I don't know if, both of them have uh, has, uh, some uh, difficulties, I would say, and that are very different, but uh, our community needs to push for this. Uh, if we don't push for now, then it will never happen. And so, um, that's a tweet. And uh, when we need, uh, I mean, spectroscopy, you get really the, the, the precise position and the, uh, all the information from the spectrum. So I hope I convince you and uh, that's it.